Oliver Conley here for the readoptional.com. Welcome to Film Don't Lie. This is a, a new YouTube series we're going to roll out every now and then, breaking down some tape, looking at some schematics, looking at some players. We're going to take a look today, Championship Sunday, looking at the Denver Broncos' defense, some of the concepts and stuff they did to stop the Steelers last week, and how they might try and use some of that to try and stop the Patriots this Sunday. Patriots and Steelers are interesting teams. They they play with a bunch of similar concepts, yet they, they utilize them in different ways. Both of them are based around beating man coverage, using what we call man-beater concepts, whether it be stacking formations to get free releases at the line, or it be motioning guys around to try and reveal man coverage, whether it be using one-on-one -on -one mismatches, whether it's double crosses, getting guys running across the field, across each other to get those rubble pick concepts you hear so much about. Whether it be switch concepts where you'll take a receiver like this, you'll put him on what's almost like a wheel route for a running back, and you switch the, re the receiver's positions essentially to line of scrimmage. So that again, if you have cornerbacks lined up alongside each other with receivers like this in press coverage, they have to try and fight through each other. You get an immediate step on them, and now you've got the switch, and now you've got open ground. So they're kind of the similar concepts that the Patriots and Steelers use. The Steelers are more of a deep threat team. Roethlisberger will throw the ball downfield more than anyone in the league. They have the athletes to get downfield. Whereas the Patriots are far more of a, of a rhythm and timing team. Okay, so let's run through some of the things the Broncos did last week to try and stop the Steelers' passing attack. Of course, the Steelers, the Broncos won't... Okay, so let's look at some of the things the Broncos did last week to try and stop the Steelers' passing attack and try and stop some of their man-beater concepts. Of course, the Broncos one of the best press coverage teams in the entire league with Chris Harris Jr., Aqib Tlaib, they've got Roby, they've got TJ Ward. They're comfortable pressing the line. It's what they want to do best. But they came to last week playing a bunch more zone defense to try and take away some of what the Broncos, some of what the Steelers do, throwing the ball down deep. See here in the first clip, they're playing off man at the top of the screen. They play here on the boundary side. They do jump down to bump and run late on that they don't get a good jam at the line. And this really, this is just a good individual play where you see TJ Ward diagnose the play early on and then he's going to drive on the ball and just make a good play. But for the most part, the Broncos were comfortable playing either in off man coverage or playing in zone coverage, you see here, these teams, both these sides, do a lot of window dressing before plays with the motion stuff, with a lot of pre-snap movement on defense from Denver. You're going to see here, the Steelers are going to motion here to try and reveal the coverage. They they believe this is man-to-man. -man. They're going to try and reveal the coverage of it being man-to-man. -man. You see the linebacker goes with. They switch there. So they know this is man-to-man. -man. So they get the favorable matchup they want here at the bottom of the screen. This is what they're looking at. So all this right here is window dressing to try and reveal, is this the matchup we can use? And so they get the one-on-one -on -one they want, and you see immediately, that's where they're looking. They get the win at the jam, the line of scrimmage. It's a poor defensive effort. I believe they're playing three deep here, and it wasn't switched. And you see they win at the line, and this is just a bad, this should be a simple completion. It's a bad drop. So now you see, this is what they did a lot during the game. Look at the the amount of depth given here. This is zone. They're going to give all this field. They just don't want to get beat down deep. They want to give the underneath to the Steels, then come up and make plays. And they're hoping that they can bet on this defensive front to get pressure on Roethlisberger. You can see all the space they have as the completion is made. So this is something you'll probably see them do at times against the Patriots today. Of course, it's different. The Patriots just don't go down deep as much as the Steelers do. What they will do is they'll use those rhythm passes and those in and out breaks from Amendola and Edelman, and then they try and get the double move or the switch concept we talked about, and they'll try and get that big play downfield. That's when you see, hey, why did the Patriots have a running back suddenly wide open down the field? They've been using the double switch. They've been using switch concepts. They've been using the double moves. And they get a guy up and downfield against man coverage to try and stop that. See the Broncos, they go to his own defense. They're trying to bring pressure up front. They have the guys to get the pressure. Probably the best rushing team, edge rushing and interior rushing the league with Wolf, Von Miller, Demarcus Ware, Shane Ray. 
Let us unable to get pressure here. The Steelers block it up pretty well. Roethlisberger has all the time in the world, and you can see all the space here. Pretty simple throw and catch. So here's the high end zone view of the play, and this is where when you start talking about the Patriots, this is an advantage they won't have. And we've seen how poor the offensive line play has been for the Patriots. Not just in recent weeks or season, it wasn't great last year, even though they went on to win the Super Bowl. That's why they need to get the ball out of their hands quickly, so when you see something like this develop, this is blocked very well up front. You see, double team, one-on-one, -on -one, great block, one-on-one, -on -one, heads up block, double team. Running back protection help if one of these guys is going to come on a delayed blitz. Locked really well up front. You can see the wall here. It's about as good as you can do it. Roethlisberger all the time in the world. Wide open man. Simple throw. So the, the Broncos, they're going to try and bring some zone pressure today, which I imagine at some point they may have to. If Edelman's winning one-on-one, -on -one, Gronkowski's winning one-on-one, -on -one, if Amendola wins one-on-one, -on -one, they'll try and mix things, things up. And Chris Harris is unavailable if limited if he's going to play today. So you're going to see a bunch of that zone pressure stuff, and it's all about, they're going to play the style of defense, which is not what the Broncos really want to do. They have to get these guys to win one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, or they have to get Derek Wolf to penetrate on the inside, draw a double team, create the one-on-one. -on -one. They didn't do it on this play, but they did do it during the game. And if this is Marcus Cannon, this is going to be an issue. And if this is going to be the interior of the Patriots offensive line, this is going to be an issue. Here again, this is a good idea of the amount of pre-snap movement you'll see from the Broncos. This is them trying to disguise their coverage. Once again, they are known as the best press team in the league. Roethlisberger wants to see some press coverage so they can get the man beater stuff going. And he's trying to diagnose what this guy is going to do here. You can see here, basic tip to look for pre-snap zone on man coverage. In the NFL, you're going to see a lot of disguise, but this is just a basic way to look at it. Is the guy looking at the hips of the wide receiver, or is he looking at the eyes of the quarterback? Eyes of the quarterback or hips of the receiver. And you see Roby down here. He's going to move a bunch pre-snap to try and disguise this. So he started off up here in press coverage. He's in a press stance. He's going to jam at the line of scrimmage. Then he's going to bail out slightly. When Roethlisberger looks his way, he's going to bail out and try and show zone. Zone, zone. So Roethlisberger, they're trying to get Roethlisberger to think they're playing a zone coverage. And then as the ball's about to be snapped, he's going to move back into a press stance. We've got off man here. We've got press here. Man. So they're playing man coverage. They're trying to disguise a zone after playing a bunch of zone on a number of snaps. They know this is what they do best. They saw the amount of open plays that were happening in the zone coverage. And now they're trying to get Roby here. Now Roby peeks in. He peeks in at Roethlisberger. Roethlisberger sees that. He tries to bite on the underneath. Roethlisberger, this is an unbelievable throw. Look at the throwing platform he has here. This is incredible. This is why I love Roethlisberger. Look at this. Look at all the carnage going on. He sees him bite inside. Those two guys are trying to take away the underneath. Roby's trying to make a play. Big play. Burn. And that's what the Broncos were worried about, being burnt by the chunk plays off man coverage. I thought this was just a poor individual play. He blew the assignment. You see again. Off man. Off man. Looking in. Looking in. Are they playing zone? Are they playing man? They're trying to disguise this coverage as best they can do. Again. They're going to play a deep zone. They're going to roll the corner. Drop the safety down. Roethlisberger throws you underneath. Should have been another throwing catch. They missed a few on the day. But you can see all the underneath. This is where the Patriots live. Look at the underneath. This, this, is, this is what the Steelers do to you. They make you scare the big play. Now, when you press at the line and you try and take away this underneath, that's when you get the double moves if there's time to make the throw. So this is the, the discussions that Wade Phillips and company will have been having this week. How do we take both these elements away? It's near impossible to do. It's what the Steelers were able to get one of them last week. Which one will the Patriots get today? That's going to be fascinating to see. And this is an example now this clip of what happens when you set all those different things up and you start showing the zone and you start struggling in the press coverage and you have to go back to what you want to do best which is the press coverage and these teams take advantage of it you see here Roethlisberger he's going to move this guy a little bit to try and reveal reveal the coverage 
That's what he wants to do. And watch now. They're going to get the entire flow of the defense coming towards the boundary side of the field. There. All these guys. Look at the flow. The entire flow from this hash, hash mark onwards. The entire flow is towards this. Bryant. The entire flow. Except for James. He's already breaking up. They get the entire flow. This is just a fake screen wheel. They're going to fake this screen. Roethlisberger knows what he's doing. He's disguising the play. He's going to hit this guy down the seam. And already the entire flow of the defense. Watch as he turns up field now. Look at the step he's got on everyone. This is going to be a legal contact right here. And they're going to get a huge play. Now this all comes about. They have to find a way, and really this is to the advantage of the Broncos. If they're going to play press today, which we imagine they will do unless they get burnt a bunch, they have to find a way to generate pressure up front. That's going to be the key. As we spoke about earlier, I just don't know if the Patriots have the horses to keep up with the elite rushes that the Broncos have. You'll see once again, this is the final play now. This is what they do, and this I love from Wade Phillips. They did go more to press man in the second half of this game because they were just getting burnt on the zone stuff. They went down at the end of the game when the game's on the line and Roethlisberger's driving. We're just going to do what we do best. Let's just jam. Jam at the line of scrimmage. Let's let our guys. They bring in this sub package. This is Miller, DeMarcus Ware, Derek Wolf. They're just going to come and get after you with a stun. This is what they do best. Press man across the board. Sub package. Let's go and get the quarterback. And I love this. This is them. Again, you're going to see a bunch of pre-snap movement. They're trying to disguise the coverage. This is what the Bills did early in the year to Tom Brady. This is what the Broncos tried to do to Roethlisberger. They're trying to confuse and at least get the quarterback thinking rather than just reacting. And you're going to see them stunt inside in here and try and generate pressure. Game winner. Here you'll see, they're going to signal the stun inside right here. Where's going to come around? Von Miller's going to use a spin move to try and win one-on-one. -on -one. There's a signal. There's the stun, takes him out the game. Double team, one-on-one -on -one matchup with DeMarcus Ware. Von Miller one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Spin move. Miller and the spin move wins. Careers into Roethlisberger, hits him. DeMarcus Ware comes to clean up. So this is the key for the Broncos today. It's the key in every game. People mention this with Tom Brady. Brady gets the ball out so quickly. Can you generate this kind of pressure? But just look at the speed and the quickness, particularly of Miller. Watch the spin move. And then in. Now if you jam at the line as they did previously, and you can generate that kind of pressure, even with the one-on-one -on -one mismatches that the Patriots have, then it could be it could be a long day. And if you get early success, the Broncos are going to have to go to the zone, and that's when Brady begins to pick people apart. You can see the jams down here. As Roethlisberger's ready to release the ball, nobody. As he's hit, no one even close to open. All right, then that'll do it for this first edition of Film Don't Lie. I hope you enjoyed this. We'll get these out hopefully regularly, hopefully once a week, looking at individual players, looking at some schematic stuff, and these will improve and get better as we go along. So thank you all for watching. Hope you, hope you enjoyed, and we'll speak to you next time.